Oh, I need a freaking beer to get through this. Yes, I'm drinking it from the can. Sorry, X. Hello there. My name is Jocelyn. You may call me Joy. And this is the Rebel News. So it's been about a month. Um, but I finally got round to making this video for my researcher. So, you know, <laughs> thanks for that. It's been a while. I've been busy. Sorry. It's time for a villain arc. This video is going to be about why there's so much weaponized transphobia these days. Why trans people is such a hot button topic in politics. And I'll tell you that at least one of the answers to this is the media. And I do mean the mainstream media when I say this. In a video posted by Politics Joe, which I will link below, um, you might want to skip ahead to like 18 minutes into the thing to get to the point that I'm about to talk about. There's an SNP MP called John Nicholson, uh, who sits on the DCMS committee where he has long scrutinised the operations of right-wing broadcasters and the impartiality of the wider sphere. In the interview, he basically rips into GB News, which is basically the UK version of Fox News. So, you know, bad right-wingery bullshit. And also the BBC, whom he criticises for platforming the LGB Alliance, who, come on, you must have heard of them by now. They're a hate monger group. They're just another hate monger group. They're lesbian, gay and bisexual people who want to dissociate themselves from trans people and other people within the wider queer LGBTQ plus, uh, they're, they're gatekeepers. They're just gatekeepers. With a lot of turfy nonsense rhetoric to spout at people. Nicholson criticised the both sidesing of the presentation that the BBC was promoting to, you know, give the appearance of this balance, like, oh, it's just a balanced debate. You've got people on this side, you've got people on that side, and let's have a debate. As if that's ever gone well for us. Not because we're factually wrong or anything like that, just because debate is not the best format to go about arguing for your own rights. Like, actual human rights. Nicholson has also criticised Melanie Dawes, who is the Ofcom chief executive. Ofcom is the uh, UK Office of Communication uh, Regulation Broadcasts. Um, basically, um, Dawes was initially supportive of the, the points that Nicholson was bringing up. But um, weeks later, she then met with the LGB Alliance. Nicholson wants stronger leadership from Ofcom, and so the hell do I. And should everybody else, you know, trans or not, just, you can't U-turn on humans' rights. And this both sides in presentation is only one meagre step above the one-sided presentation of places like Fox News. You know, it, mainstream news is where nuance goes to die now. The vice chair of the Conservative Party has said that the culture war is key to winning the election. Probably because the Tories' politics policies stink and the Tories themselves probably know that. There's also a hell of a lot of anti-Tory sentiment right now, not just because of the whole, you know, 
trans thing, but also because they've been pretty shitty about asylum-seeking immigrants and um, basically fucking us all over financially. So to deflect from their awful policies, they need to lean on this whole culture war stuff in order to gain any kind of acceptance within the public. This tactic is not new. It is, in fact, borrowed from the USA, as Nicholson points out. He also says that he read the report of a Tory MP who he didn't name, sadly, um, who claimed in this 51-page report that schools were teaching children about 71 genders because apparently school is now Tumblr from seven years ago. Also claiming that um, schools are teaching children how to strangle their partners during sex. This pretty much would have broken my brain had it not been for the sensibility of Nicholson actually saying on video in this interview that he read the full report and I feel so sorry for him having to go through that but it did work out okay in the end because he found out that both of these claims well <laughs> just oh I'm sorry he found out that both of these claims were completely unsubstantiated Nicholson fears that Ofcom is letting this kind of biased media slip through. And thanks to this biased rhetoric, politics is getting more genocidal towards minority groups. Starting with the trans people and then ending who knows where. Like, he is concerned that cis gay people and by people are next, um, which is why the LGB Alliance, being such a hateful group and all, is self-sabotaging in the end. Like, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who is gay. He came to the conclusion by himself that our struggles are really not so different, that of having a gender identity that is not the norm and that of having a sexual orientation that is not the norm. These things are not only related but they also overlap. This is why an LGBTQ plus community is vital to our survival. The result of stoking the fires of this culture war stuff is well, it's this. Joan Smith tweeted, I've been sacked as co-chair of the Mayor of London's Violence Against Women and Girls Board by email after eight years, story in today's times. It sounds kind of shitty, but, um, yeah, there's, there's reasons. Women's activists sacked by Mayor for transgender views. Aha, the plot thickens. A campaigner on violence against women claims she was sacked by the London Mayor's administration after expressing concerns about transgender women being allowed into refuges for rape and domestic abuse victims. She has bought into the bullshit and is now trying to legislate on that. And it's so funny, so wildly inconceivable that that word concern has appeared. Can't imagine, just can't imagine where that comes from. Joan Smith said she was removed by City Hall after raising the problem on behalf of charities funded by the mayor, Sadiq Khan, that were said to be concerned about the prospect. There's that sneaky word again. Do you wonder where that comes from?
She also believes she fell out of favour after calling for improvements in the way the Metropolitan Police identifies sexual predators in its ranks and for highlighting endemic misogyny. That I don't have a problem with. Police officers are not immune to being sex predators and yes there have been a few very high profile cases of this that system does need improving. Perhaps she could have just focused on that. You know, the people who have statistically actually committed sex crimes way more than the trans people. Maybe, maybe just focus on, you know, that. The data. Smith, a member of the Labour Party, pointed out that she had been appointed to an independent scrutiny role by Boris Johnson when he was the Conservative mayor, but had been removed by his Labour successor. She has served as co-chairwoman of the Violence Against Women and Girls Board, a non-paying role, since 2013. She has been told her services are no longer required and that her position will be taken over by a City Hall official. Okay. Sucks to be you. Um... It's not like you've lost your livelihood or anything. Smith wrote to Khan to say that trans women should have access to the services they need. Okay, okay, great. We love that. Don't fuck it up. But, oh, you had to go and say that, didn't you? You had to go and say that, didn't you? Oh dear. That female victims of male violence should not have to share safe spaces with individuals who have male bodies. He did not respond. I don't blame him for not responding. That's just idiotic. Individuals who have male bodies. Rarely includes trans women who take hormones to feminize their body that makes them no longer completely male. Um, some have surgeries. Again, removing them from the completely biologically male category. And even if a trans woman hasn't had any physical kind of changes to her anatomy, she's still a woman. Which means, and, and especially in the context of a domestic violence shelter, the last thing she's going to want to do is commit domestic violence. She's probably just as shaken up as anybody else who needs that service. Again, this is someone who is in the political sphere, making political decisions that affect other people's lives, based on culture war, bullshit, narrative, biased, pushed through, the media, say it with me now, the mainstream media. And it's not just GBN, it is also the BBC, it is also The Guardian. Remember when the BBC awarded the Russell Prize to JK Rowling in 2020 for her anti-trans 3,000 something word essay? See you so long, bye. And if you think this is just paranoia going through my brain, um, no. The Tories have literally admitted as much. The Express reports Rishi Sunak to weaponize issues in bid to win back voters after by-election thrashing. Crime, migrants and trans rights are all set to be the focus of the PM's new strategy as he seeks to shift public focus onto hot-button issues. Maintaining a focus on migration, Mr Sunak is set to position his party as the one capable of dealing with the issue due to Labour's opposition to their Rwanda plan, despite the government's failed attempts to fly asylum seekers to the country or to reduce the number travelling to the UK across the channel. The PM is also understood to be setting out several policies that impact trans rights, 
including pursuing stricter guidance for schools and pushing forward with plans to change the Equality Act to introduce explicit protections for biological women in same-sex spaces, such as changing rooms and hospital wards. Yet again, attacking the womanhood of trans women. By taking a direct stance against transgender people, Mr Sunak is distinguishing himself from Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer, whose position on the subject is less clear. Sir Keir has insisted there would be no rolling back on women's rights if he were Prime Minister, but has otherwise struggled to indicate his trans policy. Asked whether a person with a penis could be a woman, his response, for 99.9% .9 of women it is completely biological, satisfied neither those opposed to transgender rights nor those advocating for them. Now, I have accused Starmer of having the personality and charisma of a limp, wet cabbage. A leader needs to really be firm. Not like dictatorship firm, like... It looks like Starmer is just trying to not offend anyone by just not giving a clear answer, by trying to not get the turfs riled up, or the trans activists, and it's just pissing both camps off. You gotta be firm, you gotta stand for what you believe in. This just proves that the Tory party is full of cunts. I'll just leave that on the screen for you there. I'm not saying those words. YouTube algorithm already hates me. Another video published by LBC has MP Lee Rowley, who is being questioned quite hard here by Paul Brand, and I want to, you know, commend him for doing that. Um, basically, Rowley is trying to engaged in a little bit of both sides -ing of the argument because he himself is probably a spineless coward when it comes to these kinds of things. That's why he's an MP. Trying to signal to both the transphobes and trans people, he doesn't want to speak out too negatively against trans people, but he does of course recognize transphobes have concerns. You cannot be on the fence when it comes to people's rights. He also does the thing about competing rights. He engages and pushes the narrative that trans rights are in some way competing against or at odds with women's rights, which is the framing that a lot of this media is taking, incorrectly so. He's also guilty of downplaying and denying this weaponization against trans people. Basically making us out to look like the bad guys. Shocker. But of course his real feelings don't stay hidden for long. At the 3 minute 42 mark he does in fact say the quote, A woman can't have a penis. He goes on to blame activist groups. Uh, and of course, trans people ultimately are, end up going to be hurt by this, not addressed. You know, what about our concerns? What about our innate personhood that's being failed to be recognised here? What I ultimately think is that MPs who have zero or very little education when it comes to gender theory shouldn't talk about or legislate when it comes to gender but you know that that little suggestion might just make a bit too much sense for this world why does all this matter who cares what silly politicians in ivory towers think about transgender people well apart from the fact that they make laws and policies that directly affect us um, some of these direct effects can literally cost us our lives. Here's the part of the video that gets pretty dark, just as a warning to you all. 
the government has started sending trans women, even those who hold a valid GRC, to men's prisons. This is the result. Vicky Thompson, age 21, died in custody. Vicky died by hanging in a cell in HMP Leeds, a category B men's prison. Now I will say that this is not a recent event. This happened in 2015. This is the outcome that the Tories want. This is what happens when you send people of the wrong gender to a place that is very violent and scary and dehumanizing. Thompson feared sexual assault, which she had previously been subjected to during another sentence in the prison, and transphobic bullying was rife. Frequently receiving unwanted sexual solicitations and being at the receiving end of bullying, it's clear that this was the wrong environment for an already extremely vulnerable woman. Little was done in response to Thompson's mistreatment while in prison. A security port was not completed after she reported bullying, and neither were victim support proceedings carried out. When she was checked at 7pm, Vicky was seen lying on her bed, giving no cause for concern, the inquest heard. But at a later check at 8.10pm, she could not be seen, so staff went into her cell. Emergency services were called and she was pronounced dead 38 minutes later. A post-mortem examination found the cause of death was thought to be hanging. Vicky had previously said she would kill herself if she was sent to a male prison. An inquest heard that she was considered to be at risk of self-harm. The Ministry of Justice has been called at best incompetent and at worst inhumane after the deeply tragic death of a young transgender woman who was sent to a men's jail. This was a death waiting to happen. There was no consideration of the gender she had openly identified with for half her life. I could go on. But I think you get the picture. Vicky Thompson is not the only one. The website Trans Lives Matter has a page for remembering our dead. This is people who were trans, who are no longer with us, who should be. For more information, see that page. But I will warn you, it is heavy reading. The summary, if you want to call it that, um, is that most people featured died by suicide. And the ones that didn't were violently attacked and killed. And mostly in large metropolitan cities like London and Manchester and Brighton. It's clear. It's evident. It's so painfully crystal fucking obvious that these people... Just wanted to live their lives in peace, in happiness, in security. And when they were denied that, they were either killed as a result or they felt like they had no other option but to do that themselves. Because this world, this society, this culture that we are living in right now that is fueled by the politics and the media is beyond hostile to trans people. Which is so far against most of the experiences that I've had as an openly trans person when it comes to meeting people, talking to people. Like, transphobia is not the norm. Transphobia is, in fact, not only looked down upon as it should be, but um, quite rare, and when it does occur, it's usually a product of someone's ignorance rather than malice. At least that's what I've seen. And I'm not saying that the media is 100% entirely to blame. Let's all go smash the BBC and the GBN 
broadcasting houses. Let, let's not do that. Um, protest outside the more you want, absolutely. They wouldn't be doing stuff like this if there wasn't an audience for it. The media is not where the sole focus of blame goes, but it is key, it is vital to pushing these awful, horrible narratives about trans people in women's spaces doing horrible things that are not really happening. And as a result, trans people are not being afforded their rights, their dignity, their lives. I don't really know what to do with this. Okay, so I can refuse to watch the BBC, refuse to watch GBN, or by refusing to read the Telegraph. And I can tell other people to avoid these biased news sources as well. But beyond that, I don't really know what else to do. So I guess I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. And hopefully... Hopefully. Someone will get the message. It's a bit like that whole, um, I think it was Nietzsche who brought up the image of screaming into the void. It feels an awful lot like that. But anyway, I just remember that you are valid. God damn it. And we remember our dad. <sighs> oh, for fuck's sake. Would you just... Who cares what silly politicians in glass houses, ivory glass houses, I want to say Kim Jong-il, it's Kim Jong-un now. <laughs> Mr. Sunak is distinguishing himself from Labour. Are oh, you fucking kidding me? Signal sucks. What about our personhood? What about our human rights? I don't know if you all heard that. <laughs>